always technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, I'm running a little bit late. On time is late for me, so it's just after seven. I'll give everybody a couple minutes to pop on. Let me know if you can see me okay, if you can hear me okay. It looks really dark on my screen, so hopefully you guys aren't seeing that too. I have shorts on. It feels so weird to have shorts on in here, but it's still freezing, so it's okay to be sweater wearing. Mm. Hi, Debbie. Oh, good. Now we got some people on. Excellent. Hi, Christina. Well, since I am running late, hi, Melissa. I will go ahead and get started. Welcome to Monday Motivation. Today is Monday, June 7th. My name's Kristen. I am the owner of the Little Yarn Shop in downtown Saginaw. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Sarah. Debbie, you can see me fine. Okay, good. Hi, Joyce. I'm always, you know, I never quite know if what you guys see is what I see or what I see you guys see. Hi, Mary. Hi, Julie. <laughs> no work tonight. Good. Hi, Holly. I hope everybody had a really good weekend. It was hot, but I was able to sneak up to the campground and float in the lake and, oh, it refreshes me every time. Marcina, thank you. I'm going to talk about my sweater in a minute. Hi, Charlene. Hi, Diane. Hi, Jenny. Okay, so today is June 7th. Um, when you're watching this, if you haven't said hi, it is running, Melissa. She said that I'm getting a lot of white noise feedback, and I, I wish I had control over that. I have zero control over that. Um, I don't know if moving me any closer would make much of a difference, but hmm, how about you getting up close look at me? <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Holly, love your top. Thank you. Okay, so um, I hope the feedback's not, not too terrible. I missed you guys last week. I hope everybody um, celebrated Memorial Day in, um, in a good way. It felt odd not having to get on here and talk to you guys last week. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Nicole. Diane, thank you. You said my trip top turned out really nice. Um, I'm going to get to knits in a minute, but I, I'm sorry, you guys. I have all these notes, like a whole big page of them, because I forget things. Angie, you can hear well. Okay. Hi, Vicki. So um, I'm always interested to know who's watching live and who's watching on the replay. So if you're watching live, say hi, let me know. Plus comment, tell me all kinds of stuff. Tell me what you're working on, um, what patterns interest you, what you've been up to. Uh, if you're watching this on the replay, please put in the comments that replay or you know hashtag replay or replay just lets me know who's watching and when. On that note, I'd be interested in feedback from you guys about whether I should bump Mondays back a little bit later in the evening now that we have such light nights. Um, I don't know if this kind of disrupts your schedules. I know you can watch it on a replay, but it's just not quite the same thing. Um, so let me know if you think it would be easier for you to watch if I bumped it back to seven o'clock or if that seems too late. Let me know. I'm open to feedback. Curious to hear what you say. Susie, hi from Ludington. Hello. Julie, good evening. Christina knitting on my journey to Pearl Island. That is such a cool pattern. We're going to talk about that sometime. Um, journey to Pearl Island is like a whole choose your own adventure. Um, it's got all these parts and pieces and it's it's actually a story it's like 50 some pages um, and a million different possibilities because what you choose determines your next section Tammy live is more fun <laughs> it is I like interacting with you guys also um, if you are any part of knitting groups on Facebook like um, I know pure Michigan knitters is one there are quite a few of them out there 
Uh, it really helps the shop and to spread the word if you share the video afterwards in the groups. I don't know if you can share while I'm live. Something else you guys can tell me. All right, so yeah, let me know if you what you think about me shifting to a little bit of a later time or if you're good with seven, you got it in your calendar like I do and just keep it going. My sweater, let's talk about my sweater. Two weeks, right? Because I was talking about this yarn two weeks ago. This is the Summer Sorrel. This is, I'm gonna stand up to show you the length. I love how it fits. There's no waist shaping in it. Nice and loose. Comes just about, I mean my waist is here, so a little bit longer. I knit it the way the pattern says. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit later. My little, I wove in all my ends except those two. But these little slip stitches, reverse stockinette, seamless, top down. I, I love it. I actually wore it in here Friday. I wore it all day in here Friday and it's not too warm. It's, wool is moisture wicking. So a lot of people will wear wool all year round and um, sometimes it's beneficial. Oh, you guys. Um, hi from Wixom. Awesome. Okay, and I'm getting feedback that seven's good. Yay! <laughs> Marcina started mine but struggling. With the cast on or with the stitch part of it? You'll have to let me know. There are some short rows. Vicki, thank you. Elbow length sleeves. Yes, absolutely. Because uh, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to get better about um, knitting patterns the way they're written. So then you can see if you knit it just the way it is, what it's going to look like and some ways to modify it. So you pick up and only knit a couple rows on these little cap sleeves before you do the little bit of ribbing and bind off. Very easily could pick up and do more sleeves. Come down a little bit more, three quarters. Um, if you've knit sleeves before, um, you most likely know there are some decreases in there. Uh, there would be some decreases in there if you wanted to kind of modify it, make it your own. The same with the length of the body. Um, the one thing I did notice with the pattern is she doesn't tell you, after you split for the sleeves and you're knitting the body, she doesn't tell you to measure from where you cast on for your underarm versus where you measure, like whether you measure from your cast on all together. Um, makes a big difference in the length of it. Last time it was like this long and I thought there's, an, it's not supposed to be a crop top. <laughs> so I just kept going. But I ripped out, I was talking about that last week. I was just about to hear and started knitting the body of it and it was really loose and sloppy. So I did end up dropping down a needle size. I went from a five to a four, I believe knit the top on fives. So that's what I finished this week. Lisa from California. I love it. I saw that pop up just a couple minutes ago. So one of the things on this is it has you do a sewn bind off. Don't worry, I have a shirt on under this. It has you do a sewn bind off, which means you're using a tapestry needle and pulling a really long strand and you're stitching your way across. It's not a difficult bind off. Um, once you get into it, it's really rhythmic. I ran that much short on not running out of yarn because I still have that left, but of what I cut when I tried to do two and a half times the circumference, it happens. I tied another piece on. I just have to weave my ends in. It'll be fine. <laughs> Christina, on my second time through the pattern, I love it so much. Love it. Yay, good. Um, what Deb finished, if you've been in the shop this last week, you would have seen it, but Deb finished her Puget Sound sweater. She used uh, Malabrigo Arroyo, which is kind of a sport DK weight yarn. We talked about bobbles, no bobbles, beads instead of bobbles. Look at this. Look at this beautiful, beautiful, sweater. The body is solid all the way down. The patterning is just across the yoke. Increases are built into it. 
it is, let me make sure I'm not misspeaking. I do believe it's stranded. I can't remember if it's stranded or if it's mosaic. I believe it's stranded. I could be very wrong. <laughs> and Deb's not on, she can't correct me because she's up um, in the front lobby with her dropping knitting ladies. Barbara, I know, isn't it gorgeous? Plus the color. The color is just phenomenal. She did um, alternate skeins on the body so you don't get any hard line of where she changed. The neckline, there are a bunch of different necklines written in this pattern. That's my tag hanging on the back. This one, the one that she chose is actually a rolled so you get kind of a cowl neck on it. And look at those pearls. She put pearls in there. Yet again, we love having the bead store right in here. It's fantastic. Yeah, turned out great. Sweaters are something she's gonna start helping people get back into if you've had something sitting aside and need a little help getting back into the swing of things. So I've got that on my note to talk about a little bit later too. I know Diane, it's absolutely gorgeous. Julie, I, let's see. Okay, let's see, Melissa, the pattern tags on Ravelry say mosaic. Okay, good. So mosaic's easier than stranded color work, obviously. We've talked about that before. Um, with this, similar to what I talked about with the catkin though, you need to be cautious when you're not just slipping one or two stitches. When you get those longer sections where you're slipping four, it looks like, make sure there's enough tension in there. Hi, Joan. So that's what Deb's finished. This is what I finished. What am I working on? We'll start with kind of the least exciting. <laughs> My Curly Q coverlet, it's not that it's not exciting. I love it. I just love making sweaters too. So <laughs> I am working my way through. Let me back up a little bit. Sometimes I'm so close on these things. I have two points of my star done. It looks kind of wonky because it's on the needles. But I'm on section, I think I just finished section seven. On to section eight, which is gonna be the third point of the star. I, I would make another one of these. Um, I like the fact that it's modular knit, so I'm not sewing things together. All the stitches are live and I'm kind of picking up. It's a lot of short rows, but once you see the method and what's happening, it's, it's not, a difficult pattern to follow by any stretch. This one's going in my camper, eventually. And of course I'm using Juniper Moon Cumulus. This is my star that's in the center. Cumulus dappled in this pretty gray. Oh, random needle stuck in there. This is the outside. I forgot to do the reverse thing again. I'm seeing that as I'm showing you guys these. So that's the outside. You get that color change between browns and grays. Hi, Marsha. Marsha, I think about you guys every once in a while. I hope everybody is doing well with you. I see a lot of people here, but sometimes I don't see the same people I saw at the old shop quite as often and I miss them. So that's one of the projects I'm working on. The next project I'm working on is the, which one do I wanna to go to next? I have two really cool ones, so I don't know. We'll talk about the summer one. So I'm working on Summer Shandy. Don't worry, Melissa's gonna post a link so you can actually see it and not see everything backwards. Starts at the bottom of the front you work your way up, split for the sleeves, and then knit down the back. Here's some other. Marsha, doing great. Good. You should stop down here sometime. Thursdays are pretty quiet for people who um, want to stop by but don't want to fight with 
traffic from the farmer's market. Not that it's a fight by any stretch, but um, the farmer's market right now is Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So Thursdays tend to be a little quieter around here. Um, yeah, I, I forgot to mention last week too, if, or two weeks ago, um, now that masks have become a little bit more optional and not required, if you are uncomfortable with that and would like to schedule a time to come in on off hours, I am more than happy to do that. So um, I know that I have a few customers that have family members that are immune compromised or they are themselves and I don't want to, I don't want, to, I want to make sure that you're not excluded. So please reach out to me and let me know. I'll come in early, I'll stay a little bit late. We'll make it work. I don't live far from here. Less than 15 minutes. Diane, Curly Q will come in handy in your camper, yes. Two weeks ago, yes, it would have come in handy. Let, this past weekend, not so much. <laughs> it was warm. <laughs> um, okay, so back to the summer shandy. Oh, you said the summer shandy, okay. There are some more pictures. The back has this really cool little detail on it. It's hard to see, but it's just kind of a little shaping, just a little bit different. And I am using two yarns, calls for two yarns. And let's talk about what else is awesome with this. It comes in, got this little chart with how much yards you need of each color. You use pretty much the same amount of both colors, but anywhere from the smallest size uses 347 of each color. The largest size uses 926 of each color. So you're talking for the small one skein of each. For the largest size, for a two and a half or three skeins of each, which is not bad. Fingering weight yarn. So what am I using? I am using some Heritage Silk. Peruvian tones. Look at that blue. Look at how beautiful that is. You can see them right back behind me. The black, the blue, the dark green, the lime green, orange, yellow, yellow, orange, and red. <laughs> Summer Shandy's named after a beer. Perfect. <laughs> I know. I didn't hold that against it, Tammy. I'm not a beer drinker, <laughs> but I figured I could, I could give it a pass this time. So holding that with a skein of a new yarn that I got that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. It's Heritage Paints. So um, the Heritage Silk is, let me see, I have another one right here. 85% Superwash Merino, 15% Silk. 437 yards and 100 grams. Then Heritage Paints, Heritage Paints, Heritage Prints, Heritage solids like I have across the top. They all have the same makeup. That's not the word I'm looking for, but I can't think of it. Uh, which is 75% superwash wool, 25% nylon. Fingering weight, 437 yards per skein. So what's it look like? Stop talking and show. Look at how cool that looks. I debated back and forth um, fiber content. Thank you. I knew it started with a C. <laughs> I'm still on, on in vacation mode, camping vacation mode. I debated on whether to do technically, so the blue is my main color and the speckle, the pan paint is my contrast color. Could do it either way. I couldn't decide which way I wanted to do it, but um, like I have mentioned before, uh, Melissa, how much per skein? The Heritage Silk Peruvian Tones are $18 a skein. These new Heritage paints that we're talking about are $19.99 normally, but I'm going to discount them for a week for you guys. But only if you, if you tell me you want them on here, then that's fine. But only if you come in and mention it. Otherwise, their regular price, $19.99. I'm gonna give you guys a little bonus, a little special. Looks like ice cream, I know. So I wanted to do something different than what the, um, the pattern shows. So she shows 
a light as the main color and a dark as the contrast. So mine's kind of the opposite of that. It's gonna be really, really pretty. I wound yarn for another project too, but um, <laughs> we'd be here all night if I kept talking about the new yarns that I got. So that might be next week. These poor boxes are sitting in the back just waiting for me to open them and show you guys what's in them. They were lonely last week. I was lonely last week without you guys. So that's one of the new things I'm working on. The other new thing is the fireworks sweater. Donna, I want to take a trip to your shop. You should. Oh, that would be fantastic. <laughs> um, I, for those of you that are not local, um, because I'm kind of a one and a half woman show, <laughs> it's me here most of the time. Deb's here on Saturdays and teaching in the evenings. Karen's here helping me out. I'm trying to get my daughter to work on some more things for me, but it's slow going. But I, so I'm not good about putting all of my inventory on the website. I am really good about posting pictures and putting them on Facebook. And a lot of customers seem to do really well with just um, messaging me or commenting on the photos, what they might like. So the fireworks, if you, Go to the the pattern page. It, it she does finally show a picture of what the sweater is going to look like. So Marie Green does this four day knit along every summer four day sweater knit along challenge. This one probably would have taken me less time if I hadn't ripped half of it out. But um, I told you guys, I showed you in the skeins the difference between the two dye lots. So I got creative with it. and used it as part of the design. So, top down, seamless, one sleeve done, one sleeve not. <laughs> I was telling another yarn store owner um, when I, I showed it, I took a picture and showed it to them with the short sleeves and they commented that they've been tempted just to make a short sleeve version, which would be beautiful also. Um, you could do this in a cotton or a linen it uses a DK weight yarn. So I'm using Earth Harvest DK, all naturally dyed, which is why that happened. Within the bag, you're not gonna get that much variation. This is from two different orders. I ordered a single skein, which I'm sure they keep separate from their bags. Um, the rest of it is all pretty much the same. I did not alternate skeins. What I did do was as I got close, I think up here, maybe down here somewhere, as I got close and had just one or two rows left worth of one color, I started knitting one round with one color, one round with the other color, just so it's not a harsh line. So this is actually the back. There are some short rows up in here, but um, I don't know if you remember, I was talking about how she says you can put optional bobbles in here. It'd kind of be right here and I did beads. So the front has the beads. Look at that. I wish the light was better right here. I should sit in a different spot. But I put beads across the front. I figured I wasn't sh quite sure where they were gonna lay so I didn't want to do them across the back. But I love it. Just a little bit of sparkle. You guys see? They're glass. They're like blue and purple and they have gold in them. I love it. I did one sleeve because I kind of wanted to show what you could do long sleeve or short sleeve. Oh yeah, back to that conversation. Um, I have been known to, instead of having a contrast color as my waist yarn, use the same color yarn and put that in and wear it as a cap sleeve sweater for a little while before I finish and put sleeves on it. <laughs> I did that with one of my other marine green sweaters. I think I wore it for a year as a short sleeve sweater. But she also has on the sleeves the firework detail. Very similar to this. Obviously if you see it's um, elongated stitches. Um, the method that Marie uses for hers 
I liked a little bit better than the method that's used in the sorrel, but they're both really neat. She has you just do this like kind of almost like an elbow patch or with the option to continue it down. So I did, and then I ended up doing my cuffs in the lighter color, the lighter skein. And then there's a cute little detail along the sides down at the bottom. So no waist shaping. Once you get past the underarm, it's just a whole lot of knitting. I did, I try and make myself do two sleeves at a time, not on a circular, but um, kind of in tandem. So I'll have two sets of 12 inch circs or nine inch circs, knit a section on one until I get to a decrease, then switch to the other. That way I'm getting them, I know my decreases are equal, but since I wanted to show you guys one long and one short, I went in and put pins every time I did a decrease. I have notes on my patterns to tell me how many rows in between, but this is also just kind of a visual. I stopped putting pins when I started doing the fireworks because there's one decrease in every firework. So that's easy enough to keep track of. The sleeves are, well, I haven't blocked this yet, so I don't know how much it's gonna change. The sleeves are snug. Um, I've heard that from a few of the test knitters. So um, when we get to that point next month, it might not be a bad idea to add some more stitches in the underarm, which could easily enough be done. Some people have switched to a larger needle for the sleeves because their gauge is different. So I'm really happy with how it's looking so far. And, and what a way to embrace the change in dye lots, right? I am putting an order in this week for anybody who has ordered their yarn um, after I put the first batch order in. They're so quick to ship. I'll have it within a week or two. That's coming up. The, the knit along that kind of has a little cast on party July 1st. We may do something here on July 1st, but Joyce has a class that day too. So um, I'm not sure on that yet. Melissa, someone did ask about the yarn that you used for the sorrel. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, what I used was what I talked about two weeks ago, this Gusto, Gusto Wool Speckled Sock. Um, this was a limited edition, a limited run yarn that I got, just a one-time thing. Um, mine took me two skeins. Like I said, I had like 10 grams left. I wouldn't if I had swatched, but I didn't. Um, 10 grams left. I have a total of five skeins left of all of this. I ordered 80, you guys. So I've got, they're all right behind here. I have one of the blue. This is the light blue, kind of the baby blue. A little bit of browns in there. It got wound on a Saturday when I wasn't here. So I don't know, I think they, um, Oh, the customer didn't want it wound and, and we wound it. <laughs> so we swapped them out. And these are the two other colors. The lighter, it's not lime green, but it's a lighter green with the brown and then the more olive green with the pops of blue and kind of a gray blue in there. I have two of each of those left. $18.99. Uh, I like how the pattern also features a three color change. Melissa, you're talking about the sorrel for the, the fade that she has? Yes. Um, I like that too. I like that she kind of gives you a, a schematic or an example of how you would fade your yarns if you wanted to do that. Even if you got three yarns that were the same color but looked very different once you wound them. Um, you could do a fade sort of thing too. Just remember to make sure you save some for the sleeves so they match everything else. Okay, that's all about patterns other than, let's see. Mm -hmm. Talked about the firework. Okay, what's coming up? I don't have any, well, I do have a 
another top that I want to make, but that might be next week. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how quickly I get the summer shandy done. Um, it's a really simple pattern. Once you get past the um, I-cord cast on, it has an I-cord cast on different though than the way this one's done. So now I've learned two new methods of I-cord cast-ons that gives you, see if I can show it, this nice little rounded edge. Isn't that cool? Just gives a nice finished look. So that's the bottom edge of this. And she suggests not. So are you putting an order in for fireworks to yarn? Yes. Um, Donna, I am. A couple weeks ago, I, I held up and talked about all the colors. I trying to remember if I have them. I think I have them posted in a photo, but I don't think I have them on the website. Message me though, if you're interested and I'd be happy to text or message pictures back and forth. Um, those are 20, 26.50 maybe, a skein, link to colors. Oh, Melissa's so fast, it's crazy. <laughs> Um, yeah, so within the next few days, I'm going to be putting an order in. Um, no worries if you miss out on that. I'm, I'm always ordering stuff. And Earth is really good about not having minimums for what I order um, and when I order. What's the pretty orange and pink purple shawl behind you? <laughs> Lisa, that is... If you hadn't asked me, I'd been able to tell you. Uh, Typhoon, T-Y-P-H-O-O-N by Josh Rikes. All right, so Melissa posted a link to the colors to my post about the colors for the sweater. Again, if you have more information, since I don't have all of that in front of me, um, the pattern page is now on Ravelry though, so you can go to Ravelry to the fireworks pattern and see yardage and um, more information about it too, as far as how much you need. So on the summer shandy, she has you do kind of the slip stitch I-cord edging, which means you can carry your two yarns right in there without having to cut it each time. That Typhoon, the one that Lisa's talking about, let's see if I can move a little bit. Isn't that cool? One skein of a solid, one skein of a self-striping, um, or in this case, it was Brenda and Heather's uh, sunset, I think. And it's, they call it a palindrome, so it keeps going back and forth between the two. I know, I found that one in the back when I was moving stuff around and thought it needed to come back out and see the light of day. Um, so, classes. Let's talk classes. Finally, we're to a point where we're able to start that back up again. Um, Monday evening from 6.30 to 8.30, um, our, that's Deb's drop-in help class. So it's $10, you don't have to schedule it ahead of time, you don't have to book a block of two or three in a row. Um, we do have class punch cards, so once you attend so many classes, you get another one for free. But it gets you two hours with Deb. Um, the shop's closed, so it's nice and quiet in here. Usually it's just a handful of people. Since I am now in the shop, on Mondays, <laughs> disrupting them a little bit. Right now, as I mentioned in the beginning, they are sitting in the atrium up out in front um, chatting, and then they'll probably come in here once I'm done. But um, that's any project, whatever you're working on, whether it's a sweater, socks. Um, sometimes we have our beginning knit ladies pop in if they get stuck on something, anything. Whatever the project is, it's a great way to get help, chat with a few people, yeah, so that's Mondays, 6.30 to 8.30 every Monday. She's doing something sort of similar Saturdays. Saturdays from 3.30 to 5.30. We're calling it sweaters or whatever. Um, we're kind of trying to focus on sweaters for a month, socks for a month, but really it's the same thing. $10 to drop in, you get that dedicated two hours with her to answer any questions if you want to start a new project that's a great either Mondays or Saturdays are a great time to do that because you've got somebody that can sit with you talk to you about gauge um, 
talk to you about choosing yarn, choosing patterns right from the very beginning. So um, yeah, take advantage of those. Beginning knitting and beyond is what I'm calling our, um, what I was calling our beginning knitting class. Um, Wednesdays, it's a six week class. It's $50 plus the cost of materials. Those run Wednesdays from 6.30 to 8.30. This is not just for somebody who's never picked up knitting needles before. I have, it's probably half and half, really, really novice knitters and maybe some people that have been knitting for a long time but aren't really confident in their knitting or how to fix their knitting. Um, she goes through casting on, seed stitch, so knits and purls right away, um, ribbing, lace, cables. They work on a scarf and it's it's amazing. She really, it's a really well-rounded class and it's helped a ton of people out. Lisa, thank you. I'm pretty happy with it too. So my sweater turned out great. <laughs> okay, so Melissa did post a link to um, our classes and events page on the website. Anytime I put a class on the calendar, it automatically goes on the calendar on the website to um, sign up. While you're on there, you're also going to see the dates for the um, our retreat. It's uh, now been confirmed official. So our retreat is out at Bayshore Camp, which is in Seabuing, kind of up here, up in the thumb, not like Caseville, but um, from us, it's just about, is it an hour? A little bit less than an hour? I don't know, I've done this, this is the fourth time now, I, you'd think I'd know by now. Uh, but dates for the retreat are September 23rd through 26th. It's a Thursday through Sunday. We arrive Thursday, midday, we get dinner that night. What's included is dinner that night, brunch Friday, and Saturday and Sunday and dinner Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, there, Melissa put the link right in there. Um, the pricing is in there. I asked for $50 deposit now and the remainder, I think by September 1st, I can't remember. Uh, there are three different rates. You can have a um, single, double, or triple occupancy room. They are not bunk beds. They are not little kids' beds. These are beautiful rooms we stay in. If you've been there, uh, and you know where the Ambi Lodge is. We stay in the Ambi Lodge um, if we're either two or three per room. And they're beautiful, like wood framed beds. It's like having your own little hotel room. Each room has its own restroom. September 10th is when the balance is due per my website. There we go, <laughs> September 10th, apparently. But again, there's a different rate depending on how many people you want in your room with you. There is not a cap on the number of people that can come. So our retreats are pretty casual. We do a lot of kind of pop-up technique talking. Uh, we are combined with some quilters that used to go to um, Back Alley, Back Street Quilt Shop <laughs> um, out in the Thumb. Her shop unfortunately closed last year, two years ago, I believe, but she still, um, Barbie still organizes a lot of quilting and, and handwork events. So this is kind of one of her smaller events. We tack on with it, um, but we get a big workspace that we can use the entire time we're there. Like I said, the me two meals a day are provided. I'll bring exclusive yarns, usually something different, um, sometimes project bags, things like that. So it's really casual. Typically it's warm, so we bring lawn chairs and sit outside and knit. Sometimes they have their kids camp going on so we can watch the kids running around. And it's, it's just a really great time. Melissa, I can't wait either. It's gonna be so much fun. So September 23rd through 26th. Um, let's see, dates, other dates. This Saturday is Worldwide Knit in Public Day. I think what I settled on is, I mean, we're knitters. Every day is Knit in Public Day. <laughs> Do we need like a Worldwide Knit in Public Day? Sure, why not? For those who need an excuse, a reason. 
what I would love is for the spaces in the marketplace inside and outside to be just sprinkled with knitters. There are seating spaces upstairs in the um, food court atrium area in the front lobby like the ladies are now. Um, Julie got time off for the retreat. Yay! <laughs> Fantastic. Lisa, oh, Lisa, you're coming. Great. Donna, yay. Yes. Oh, so much fun. Um, so this Saturday, shop hours as normal, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be around, so I don't want to do anything really out there and, and make Deb and Karen have to deal with that. So that's pretty much what we're going to do. Uh, there are, if it's a beautiful day, I haven't looked at the weather forecast, but um, there are benches outside, picnic tables outside, so we could knit inside, outside, everywhere. I just think it'd be really cool to have, like, you know, some people yarn bomb buildings. I just want to, like, knitter bomb and crochet or bomb the building. Like, just have, have people with yarn in their hands everywhere. <laughs> And of course, you know, if you need a new project or help, we're inside. Well, somebody's inside. So that's this Saturday, the 12th. Um, classes, classes. The other note about events coming up, the I-75 Yarn Crawl, July 30th through August 7th. I don't remember if I talked about that last week or not, or two weeks ago, uh, but it is happening. Yeah, oh yeah, because you guys were helping me remember whether Kentucky was north or south of Tennessee. <laughs> so I'll mention it again, July 30th through August 7th. I'm um, getting a little closer to getting something special done yarn-wise with a couple different dyers that are going to be released then. So that's exciting too. Uh, okay, so I think that's... That's all I have about projects. I do have some yarn here, like I mentioned, that we can talk about if you guys want. If you're sick of me talking and you want me just to end the video, just let me know. I can do that too. I hope that's not the case because I want to show you guys this yarn. Um, oh, one last thing. I wanted to make sure that you know um, there is, it is orange barrel season 100% in Michigan right now, um, at least in the Tri-City area. It's crazy. Um, one day you'll come and one exit on 675 is closed. The next day a different exit might be closed. Right now, the little stretch of um, Water Street between Genesee and the building is blocked down to one lane. Um, so please just be patient and know if I had control over it, I would just snap my fingers and fix the damn roads. <laughs> <laughs> and then we wouldn't have to worry about it, but that's not the case. What I find, Deb and I chatted about this a little bit just now, um, what I find is even if I know where I'm going, I will look at it on Google Maps because it will show um, pretty accurate live traffic patterns and construction areas. So I always pull that up and just kind of, well not always, because sometimes I end up driving all over the place, but just worth Kind of checking out oh you guys want to see yarn okay so like i said um these are heritage paints 19.99 a skein but they are going to be discounted did i say i don't remember if i said 15.99 for this week so until next monday's video i have i got 10 skeins of each color and there are eight colors it's a lot of yarn, another 80 skeins. And I have more to show you guys next week. Ah! So the first color is Heritage Paints. Yeah, 75.25. This is color 97.22. The base is white. This is fun too, what it looks like in the skein versus what it looks like in the cake. I might move my camera a little bit because I look really dark right here. Let's see if I shift. <laughs> I can get a little more light. I just don't want you to see the mess 
on the floor behind me. Okay, so that's number, that's color 9722. Kind of a white with splashes of lime green, teal, is denim blue, and hot pink. Really summery and fun. And again, what I will do is post photos of this, of all of the colors, so you kind of know. It's a lot to keep track of. <laughs> Melissa trying to buy yarn right now. <laughs> I know, I'm such an enabler, it's terrible. So, there's the first one, 97.22. Next is 97.23. You know, what's frustrating is, on my invoices and on their, maybe not on their website, half the time they have color names, half the time they have color numbers. So, um, but they don't have colored names on their tags. So that's why I have to go with numbers. So I apologize about that. Melissa, what's she telling you? If you'd like to order now, comment a color number, how many, and whether you want to pick up or ship. There we go. She's got me covered. So yeah, you can post right in the comments. Like I said, I have 10 of each except that first one I showed you because it's gonna be my top, so I have nine of those. Look at this. With the pinks and the gray and the white, I love this one. This is 97.23. Beautiful. If you guys saw my table, you don't wanna see my table. It's a mess. I don't have room for anything, I just keep tossing stuff around. 97.63, this reminds me of crocuses. A white with splashes of purple, yellow, green, and where they blend together, you get really cool looks. I love that one. 97.63. A lot of these colors look so springy. Um, pansies, yeah, there you go, Tammy. Diane, I'm curious what you're gonna come up with names for this week for my, like, I, my strawberries and dirt <laughs> from last time. Um, these are really great, these first few are really great summer colors, but really, any time of year, you can knit summer sweaters, you can do it. If you are somebody who runs naturally, really warm, and you don't think you can wear sweaters, knit a summer sweater and wear it in the winter. Nobody says you have to wear long sleeves in the winter. We know that. As we get older, we can't control our body temperature so much. This one's 97.21. Look at this. <gasps> peaches and yellows. It's like a corally peach. It's both kind of the corals and the peaches. So, so beautiful. 97.21, orange sherbet, yes. I, I say yes and no because I don't love orange sherbet, but I love this color. And if you ask me if I loved orange and yellow, I would say no, but I love that, it's beautiful. Next is, okay, so the next two look very similar, so I wanna kinda of hold them side by side so you can see the differences. This is 97.24. It's got kind of a whitish, off-white base with streaks of greens and browns. Kinda of like a brindle brown and then this little bit of a lighter brown too very camo if you want to do if you have guys that are into camo socks um, camo hats stuff like that I mean obviously it's a little bit bright for some camo things but great masculine color so what is that what did I say 9724 Diane I know there are so many oh I'm supposed to hold that one out 9725 looks very similar but it's got peaches instead of the brown tones in there. Kind of rust colors. Look at that. Look at that rust color down in there. So, so. I don't know. I have to stop saying beautiful. 
97.25. So this is 97.25 with the pinks in it. 97.24 with the browns in it. Even together, they'd be kind of a cool fade. You could do something with them. So they look similar, but different. And the last two, kind of the same situation. They look close, but they're very different. This is 9720. Seems sort of patriotic to me, even though if I look at the colors, it's there's much more than that going on. It'd be a great one if you wanted to do something patriotic that wasn't like in your face, red, white, and blue. Because you have the red, white, and blue, but then you've got turquoise and browns, like this real, really deep browns in there. Pale blues. I, I think this one would be a really cool scarf. 97.20. Melissa, the green and peach and pink. Yes, I know it's beautiful. Jackie, you're going to be in on Thursday. <laughs> and I did it again. I'm supposed to hang on to that one. The last one is 97.62. It's like the brighter sister to the other one. So it's got the greens, a little bit of a deeper red and the blues, still the turquoises. So this is 97.62, this is 97.20. Oh, and I hold them up, they don't really look that much alike, but they both have the reds and blues in there. One's got the greens, one's got the browns. Again, normally 19.99, for this week, they're going to be $15.99. If you, um, you want to get some but you're not local, I'm happy to do that. Just comment what you need or message me through Facebook or Instagram or email the shop, littleyarnshop at gmail.com. Call the shop, 989-274-8571. We'll hook you up. You can text the shop too. It's a cell phone, so you can text it. Um, I think I've said this before, but I like the fact that I can take pictures and text back and forth with people. So that's this week's. I got some different yarn from, can I show the colors again? Yes, I would be happy to. I will even try and keep them in the same order, Diane. We'll see how I do. So that's the first one, 9722. That's the one I'm using in my sweater. Pinks, greens, little bits of teal, little bits of blue, 9722. And then what did I do, the pinks? Diane, I haven't yet, but I will. But I'm happy to, to go through them. 9723 is the pinks with the gray. If I had a little girl that was still into wearing little girl things, I would make many things. I could do a sweater, hat, mittens. I would make her a whole wardrobe out of this color. I love it. I love grays for kids, pinks and grays. So that's 9723. Purples and yellows. 9763. Tammy said pansies, yes. Yeah, because they have that yellow in there, too. Yellow, purple, green. Definitely. Looks very much like pansies. 9721 is the peaches and yellows. That bright. Look at that bright, bright yellow. I was debating. I kind of wanted to do the summer top, the summer shandy with this and another color, too, but... Um, I don't really know why I didn't. <laughs> so that's 97.21. The two kind of more uh, woodsy colors, I guess, would be. 97.24 is the green with the browns. 
9725 the greens with the peaches that would make a beautiful cowl if you ever get bored go back to my video <laughs> where I talked a whole bunch about one skein projects mostly fingering weight um, I, I think my mom counted how many patterns I went through and it was like 18 or 19 patterns that I went through that are all just one skein sock yarn projects Diane picking some out excellent Melissa our little yarn shop shopper will is keeping notes <laughs> so that's 97.24 97.25. I am what I did finally talk my daughter into. Well, let me do these last two first and then I call her distracto girl, but it's pretty much me being distracto girl. Oh, you don't need to see the tags. 97.20. It's kind of the Patriotic, but not really. 97.62 is the brighter, kind of the burgundy, a brighter blue, greens, turquoise. And those are my last two. Okay. If you come into the shop and you want some, just make sure you mention to me because I will forget and I'm not going to put it in the system that they're discounted because I want this to be for my Facebook people. I appreciate that all of you join me on here. So I want to give you guys a little something. $15.99. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I did talk my daughter into putting together notes and links to the patterns um, that I hope will be put up on the website. She's only done one so far, but we're working on getting uh, more of those put together. So, um, if you don't want to take the time to watch, like look at the video and find a pattern that I talked about, she should have all the links in there for that. Um, and you love them all. <laughs> I know, right? It gets me in trouble because I want to start all the things and I can't, if I knit up all the yarn, I don't have anything to sell. <laughs> and that would make people sad. It would make me sad. All right. Um, let me check my list one last time to see if I forgot anything. Oh, uh, the if you bought a kit for the LYS Day shawl, the You Are Enough triangular shawl that just had those beautiful blues and pinks in there, that code expires June 17th. So make sure that you pull that little piece of paper out there and add that pattern to your library before June 17th. Oh, a class I forgot to talk about. See, that's why I make notes. Uh, Joyce is getting out of the house for a little bit and um, gonna help us out with some classes. She is going to teach a double knit class. It's going to be a pot holder. Uh, the class is $40, it's a two week class. The cost does include the yarn that you're gonna need, which is, it's gonna be a wool. Um, Feltable if you want to make a coaster out of it, but it's straight up and down. It's kind of a like a I want to say buffalo plaid, but that's not really what it is. But it's kind of a, a plaid looking double knit pot holder. That class has two sessions. It's going to be well, June 24th and July 1st. So the last Thursday of the month, and then the following Thursday, the first Thursday in July. Um, like most of our classes, I keep them small, six people max, especially if they're during shop hours because I don't want it to get too crazy in here, but I'm so excited to be able to get people back in the shop again and sitting around the table, which means I have to clear the table, <laughs> which is a good thing. So uh, I know there are still a couple spots left in the double knit class. And like I said, the Monday drop-in classes and Saturdays, you don't need to sign up ahead of time. Those are drop-in anytime you need help on a sweater or anything else. Um, I encourage you to, to stop in and see Deb. All right. See, this is what happens when I haven't talked to you guys in two weeks. I have all sorts of things. I have a, 
I have a Malabrigo box in the back too that I haven't even opened. That came last week. You guys. <laughs> if I was more than one person, I would do this a couple times a week so I could do unboxings, but my brain can't handle that. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys have a great week. I hope you stay cool or stay warm, depending on where you are. Keep your hands busy, whether that's knitting, crocheting, spinning, gardening, painting, just be creative. I hope you got some good ideas from this and I will see you all next Monday at seven. Thanks, have a good night.